Good morning, sisters and brothers. Greetings to you in the dull spirit of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It is another a joyous day that the Lord has granted. And I'm pretty sure we all appreciative. First, we want to acknowledge the sick and shed in, the bereavement families, and those that are dealing with personal problems so that we can gather together and display some of the the joys that the Lord had put on our face. Also this morning, we'd like to acknowledge that uh, we're good to see Nail in the house. Yes, and uh, you're welcome. And, uh, and too, you know, we thought about, you know, I was looking for the following Sunday, but we heard that she had to have surgery. I'm correct with that. And it's to see how amazing God's hand is. So that, uh, we see how that he do for others as well as he's done for us. And uh, we all took a part in that. Everybody was concerned. Such a snow came over there, I was getting ready to crank up because the pastor came to the pool pit. She came back up for me. I said, what does she want with me? Got back here, seen Neil. I don't know how Neil turned around in that chair like that. When I first seen her, I said, how did she do that? And uh, First thing I tried to do was move the bench, because I know I couldn't get in there. But somebody said, get the wheelchair. Came back and I seen her up. That was good, because uh, everybody took a hand. I just want to acknowledge that. And this morning, of course, we, uh, we see that we're in the book of the physician. But we're going to see now, even though we're in the book of the physician, but we're going to see the healing physician, Jesus Christ himself. We're going to see the miraculous hand of him. We're not going to see the hand of Luke, of Luke, but Luke come on to acknowledge him. But we're going to see his performance. Today, our lessons come from Luke 8, 40. Through 56, it says, the place that we are in is Capernaum. The title of the lesson is Jairus, Daughter, and the Bleeding Woman. It's in three outlines, a woman healed, 40 to 44, words of hope, 45 to 50, a girl raised, 51 to 56. Let us pray. Thy kind and loving Heavenly Father, once again, dear Lord, we humbly bow before your throne to seek your holy guidance, Lord, that we might get clarity and understanding to your word. We ask that you use all of us to endure into your holy gospel, that we all, dear Father, might grow and be close to thee. Thank you for the gospel. Thank you for the filling of your Holy Spirit. Bless these, thy people. Encourage their hearts, Lord. We know, dear Father, that times are very, very dim. But in your hands, we commit ourselves. For to thy servant's prayer, pray in thy son Jesus' name forever. Amen and thank God. Okay, uh, I like to launch off into the chapter from verse 38. Now the man out of whom the devils were departed besought him that he might with him, that he might be with him, but Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to thy own house and show how great things God had done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city how great things Jesus had done unto him. We see, prior to the lesson that we're about to get into, Jesus was going around not just teaching, but he was healing. And we see the conversion right here with this man with the 
with the issues, with the, with the fear, with the demons, how that he himself, he desired to stay with the Lord. I didn't get a chance to see that. It's good when you can recognize the good things that God has done, and not only recognize, but show appreciation to them. And when he went back to his community, everybody knew where he had come from. Because we really believe when you was ill and you're in a tight community, I'm saying it's a tight community. I'm not really, it didn't say he were in a tight community, but I'm saying that he were. When you're in that kind of community, everybody knows about you. So everybody knows that he was ill, but now they see this man in his right mind. And I think it is so precious we see, when we can see one another in their right mind. Because being ill, you hurt folk. First, you might hurt the ones that you love, the ones that love you, because a lot of times those are the first when you turn on. I don't know why it's that way, but that's what's happened a lot of times. So that's my introduction, and we'll proceed to do the first outline, A Woman Healed, 40 through 44. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue. And he fell down at Jesus' feet mm -hmm. and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had one only daughter, about 12 years of age, and she laid a dying. But as he went, the people threw, thronged him. And a woman having an issue of blood, 12 years, which had spent all of her living upon physicians, neither could be healed of any, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. And immediately her issue of blood staunched. Amen. Thank you. A woman healed. Okay, uh, we see him proud. He had just healed, let's say, a wild man. And it says, and it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, he returned back to Capernaum, this place that we are in Capernaum. The people gladly received him. He said, gladly received him. Okay, um, what was the purpose they were glad to receive him? Was it that uh, they wanted to see what they wanted what he can do for them, or was it they wanted to be transformed? You see, a lot of times we uh, we crave the people because what we feel like they can do for us, but do we crave to them see what we can do for them? That's just a service thing. We ought to be served and to serve. And here, for they were all waiting for him. They had, let's think about it like this for a minute. They had all their preparation thoughts for him, what they wanted. But you see, we can't really pre-think the conclusion of God. Because then, if we can do that, what was the purpose of faith? We need to be able to Rely on God at what God do. Because, say like uh, this morning we was coming in, and that was a property that uh, we saw. And it didn't come through. So Carly asked me this morning, was I downhearted about it? I said, well, not really, but I tell you, though, when I go in, I go in to win, and I expect to win, but I can accept the loss. It's not really a loss. It's just a part of your training. But how do you accept that part of your training? You want something, but can you really, really accept what God do? It's not easy for nobody. I don't think it's easy for anybody. I know it's not easy for me because I have a desire for something, and the desire don't come in the way I'm looking for it. 
then how am I going to diverge myself into that? And then stay, say, encourage someone else. Because we, we all going to do that. We are all going to go through something that we wanted that didn't come that way. Then you had to happen to you, I had to happen to me, and I done made it personal. How can I help you? I can't. Because I'm thinking about myself. One thing about myself, I'm killing everybody else without the thought of killing. We have to watch a lot of things. Because we can take up some things that's being good, but be detrimental. That's why it's so important to have our conversations. When you look at Jesus, he went to this man and addressed his illness. He didn't address the man, he addressed the man's illness. And that's how you relate. So he says, and behold, there came a man named Jairus. Out of this lesson, starting out, no one's name is given but Jairus. He wants to really, really pay attention to Jairus. Because Jairus is going to display a great deal of faith. And he was a ruler of the synagogue. In this case, ruler, he was an organizer. He see that things took place. And see, I'm going to say he took this look at seeing them to come place, take well. Because he's the ruler of the synagogue. And you know, when you perform, you want us to show a good performance. When you see the great professional players, you don't always see them talking about money. They be talking about the performance. I love the game. But then when it's time to negotiate, you negotiate. But now it's time to play the game. You can't play the game if you got your mind on everything else. You get your partner hurt because there's assignments. And we as Christians, when I think of it, but we do have assignments. We have to protect one another. We don't think about it that way. I, I'm not going to say we don't. I don't know, but I don't think we think about it that way because I can't say what you're thinking. And I'd be wrong to do that. And I can't read minds, and I don't want to read minds because it's unfair to me. And he fell down at Jesus' feet. He fell down. He surrendered himself and besought him that he would come into his house. This man was willing for Jesus to come to his house. You know, to me, that indicates that this man wasn't afraid of his living. Because he said, come on in. I need you in. So, and it says, for he had only so he had one only daughter. And this too is relatable. Pretty much everyone in here has kids. And just think you had only one child. And your one child lays very grave and there's no one else to help. You don't been to doctors, the grave is still there. How are you? Oh, let me share a story here. You know, in the family, well, say she was about 12 years old of age. Here it is. Let's say, in your life, you was a Job type, shrewd evil did good things, but here, an oppression have fallen on you, a very, very deep oppression. Praying individual, preach your neighbor right, scripture says, do unto others you have to do to you, he's doing that, but yet and still, my only child is falling, only. And, and she, listen, lay a dying. Not just she just sick, but she lay a dying. And you were witness to this. You see her. I can't say this when I believe. You know, I develop a lot of respect for sick kids. I happened to go down to Scottish Rite and seen where these parents, 
never leave their child a lot of times. They stay there the whole while till that child goes home. I said, God, man, you think how that your whole life stopped just for this. Your whole life. Until then they go home, that didn't leave because she got a mind. And that mind, it records and displays just like it wants to. Though we need it, though, now. But we have to learn to manage that. Because if we don't, we can easily go into oppression. And you don't need to go into oppression because your service is needed. How are you going to serve when you're in oppression? Can I try? I hope I can give you a picture of this condition. It appears here, but how far are we from that condition? How far? Have you ever watched a loved one leave here? Hmm. I don't mean to be too far with this stuff, but that's where we are, though. We don't know what we're going to have to deal with. Eh. Well, she lay a dying. But the man had hope, though, didn't he? But as he went, the people thronged him. In your mind, this place is so filled, packed with everybody. You pressing, you pressing. But yet and still, this man wasn't deterred. He went to Jesus and he got to him. So that says again, too, you must have perseverance. No matter of your condition, you must have perseverance. You got to. Because I'm going to say this too. Our four folks, thank God for them mightily, because they had great perseverance. Can you imagine a wife is at home in the bed with her husband? You know, I would work like a mule all day. And they come in and snatch them out the bed. All fine, right? But still, they had to live through that. And then here we are today. In a glorious time, yet oppressive, but it's glorious. Because the highway that has been made, and it was made through the Lord. Even though people worked it, but it was made through the Lord. And a woman having an issue of blood, 12 years. We seeing. The first, what that was, 39 and 40, 38 and 39, those two verses showing that there's some of the sickness that has to be dealt with in our society. And then here we come right here again, showing continuous of the sickness that has to be dealt with. And it says, which has spent all her living upon physicians. Um, you hear where that medicines is so outrageously priced till seniors are debating whether to eat or take pills. In America, if you have worked all your life and put money in the system, There should be some buy down stuff that reduces that without asking for it. You know, the people are going to live to a certain point of not in time, but you know, people are living longer. Why don't you fight for that? They don't work hard to make this country move, but yet and still you tell them, you mean nothing. When you set them on a fat keg, but we have the mighty God on our side that uh, he's working on that both ways for us to be mentally strong in Christ Jesus and also to be strong enough to deal with the climate conditions that the world, that man had made in the world that we deal with. Glory to his name. He says, came behind him and touched the border of his garment. Okay, uh, she had to have had some belief to know that Jesus wasn't just an ordinary man. And 
It demonstrated out of these three that no one treated him like an ordinary man. It shows that, I don't want to get too far, but it shows that uh, to hear about Jesus, that's why, too, again, it's important that your witness, love your witness in relationship with the Lord so that they, they match up with your living. You go tell someone or someone believe in you to be Christ-like, but then they don't match up. You make that person begin to think about two things. They should have the solid thing first. You, we already know you can't control the mind. You can't do that. Now you get some shots up there, but then you're going to be crazy. You're going to lose something. Which one do you want to do? I just did with the mind, personally, because I know the mind and I need the mind. And Because uh, if you have the mind, you can figure stuff out. But that little coconut go away, boy, is, what you going to figure out? People make decisions for you. You have my own thing for yourself. So who is that? Now one of the brothers here at church said, I thought it was very intriguing. He said, you know, I was glad this morning when I looked in the mirror and knew who I was looking at. You know, some of that stuff we take for granted. That's a big thing. I said, you know something, man, I hadn't thought about it like that, but that is. Because you can look in the mirror and look again. You, you might not even remember to call your wife or your husband. You don't know what you're going to do. That just might happen. Stay in Christ strong and long as you can. And it says, immediately her issue of blood stopped. It stopped, cleared up. Immediately. No conversation. No prescription written out. Just that the lady had astounding faith. She had to have had. And when I saw the lesson, I said, hmm, this is pretty good because uh, it relates. Just like a few Sundays ago, we saw right here in the present, one of our sisters had a little short secretary. But you see, in that though, see, they, they took her to the hospital where that guard removed that short. Though the doctors worked on it, but guard removed the short though. Because he the only one can heal. Like yesterday's healing, he's still the same one today healing. He haven't changed from that. No matter what nobody do, he's still doing his healing. So this is the first outline, a woman healed. So anyone care to say a little something? something? Yes, sir. Well, uh, can you think of, oh. Yeah. Make a comment. On um, verse 41, the last line, we said, um, where Jairus, Jairus knelt down at Jesus' feet and besought him yes. and asked him would he come to his house. I just thought that was very interesting mm -hmm. because we seek God every day. But how many of us are mm -hmm. willing to let him come into the house? Mm -hmm. Not our homes, but into the house, into our hearts. Mm -hmm. Is there something there that we don't want him to see? Are we hiding stuff? so that we're afraid for him to come into the house. So I think that's really an interesting point because if you really want God to do for you, mm -hmm. you have to be willing to open up all Amen. the windows and be seen. Thank you very well. Appreciate that. Yes, so thank you. Because we, we, the lesson is showing the importance of, as he said a few weeks ago, Surrender, submit yourself to ye one another. Because we shouldn't be afraid. You know, you know, the stuff can be kept, but we shouldn't be afraid to be expressive with one another. To a degree. Because, you see, there is a connection that we have. And it's a holy connection. We have nothing to do with that. Except in God gives that. And we say is that we join in this special group 
why do we have so much hindrance in this special group? Because this group elevates us so that in this elevation, we should feel one another because we all have pain and we all gonna have pain. No way around it, because there's somebody you're gonna care for and there's something gonna to happen to that somebody that you care for somewhere along the way. And what you gonna do about it? So thank you, Pat. Anyone else? Oh, you got your hand up, Jacob? I'm just kidding, you know, but uh, okay, this, this is the first outline. And we had a chance to close it. Throughout this chapter, Jesus had done some amazing thing all the way through this. You remember this lady, Mary Magdalene? She was possessed too. Jesus took a little time with her. She didn't want to leave him either. It's just something about when Jesus has really done something for you and you have appreciation for it. You can't hold back. It's impossible. To, because to me, you begin to govern God. And why should you govern God? He's too big to want to do that. All he want to do is to elevate us to the best we can be. And that's called for, let me say, we are, we, are farm, we are husband man farmers. You have to prune to make a better plant. You have to. Because there's some dead that's going to grow on there. You got to get it off. And if you don't prune, you got to dig the ground because grass lives just like the plant. And you're constantly working. Well, it's for the best. I tell you, when you get a garden, like a nigga, yeah. When you get a garden and see all these beautiful, and the food do taste different now, it gives you a lot of pleasure in seeing what you have accomplished. Okay? Words of hope, 45 through 50. And Jesus said, Who touched me? When all denied, Peter and they that were with him said, Master, the multitude thronged thee and pressed thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And Jesus said, Somebody have touched me, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. And when the woman saw that she was not hid, she came trembling and falling down before him. She declared unto him before all the people, for what cause she had touched him, and how she was healed immediately. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy mm -hmm. faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace. Amen. You said go to 50? Yes, we always to 50. Right. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not. Believe only, and she shall be made whole. Amen. Thank you. Words of hope. Now we come into this pressed arena where it is that everyone wants something because it said in Scripture we see where that he brought, they brought the sick to him for him to heal. And it says, 45, and Jesus said, who touched me? Out of all the people, this one lady was singled out by Jesus. And I like the way the story unfolds itself. So it, to me, it gives you the context to look in and become a part of it. So you can see that in the process of Jesus, that is, he takes time. He relates and he builds. So that this to me gives you an ankling. So you can have something to hold on to. Because you see that he can just go in there and just wave his hand and do it. He took time. He says, When all denied, no one admit to touching him. But Jesus said, Yes. I've been touched. Peter they that were with him said, see, uh, 
to me Peter responding in a natural. Nothing wrong with that. He's a natural man. And he's learning. But Jesus, Jesus didn't uh, say, are you all paying attention? I know there's a crowd here. But don't focus the crowd. Because if you focus the crowd, you stand a chance of missing what's needed. Even in a crowd, you need to be able to pick out something special. When we have been made special through the will of God, through Jesus Christ on the cross. There's a difference. But we have to practice that. Because if we don't practice that, how are we going to attain it? Every athlete that is good, they continue to practice, no matter what. Because you got everybody getting better, he says. And he says, Master, the mother too thronged thee and pressed thee. And says, Thou who touched me. How are we going to tell? How are we going to tell who touched you? You see, uh, evidently, this lady, with her faith, resonated. And through this resonating, God shows us that when we do this, he knows. Without even seeing you, physically seeing you, spiritually he saw her. So I like to look at a lot of this stuff is to encourage. Because at the end of the lesson, we're going to see something that was said towards the disciples. Because uh, everything that we are going through is for learning. We have to learn. It's pretty bad if where you are today, next year, you're in that same place. You're dead. You're not, you're not moving. If you're not moving, what good is it? If you had two apples last year and saying you're going to accumulate apples, but then one year later, all you have is two apples. What have you accumulated? Where's your time? We saw in here, your time is precious. The lady with the 12 years, she was, she was working. She spent all her money. She didn't just sit back. Took all her money. And saw how much it was. But in today's time, we know medical attention is very expensive. All those machineries. Man. They have to pay for them. Not only pay for them, they got to have maintenance for them. And it's expensive. So you can imagine. But then you see... We have this beautiful redeemer named Jesus. We had to pay him nothing. Just obey him. Still. And, and Jesus said, somebody had touched me. He said somebody, but he, I think he wants to sort of build up the process here. Because he could have said, this woman right here touched me. He didn't do that. He wanted to identify it, and I would say he'd like to have a teaching moment for us. Because he could easily say who it was. He knew. And he says, I, for I perceive that virtue is gone out of me. Spirit. It's amazing. Out of all these people, this one woman that we know she's been, she been humiliated. We know 12 because it says 12. But how many before that? Nobody wanted to touch her because she was considered as being unclean. But right here, Jesus could have said, a unclean woman touched me. Get her out of here. But mercy, grace, and truth had compassion. He had mercy for the lady. Because she had faith. Even though she spent all her money, she didn't stop. She kept on going. 
Do we stop because we had a hard time? Sometimes we just complain too much instead of doing something and trusting in the Lord. I want this, and it don't come your way, you pout. God got you up this morning, let you rest all night long, giving you a brand new day, and because something didn't go your way, you start pouting. Let's think if God started pouting. What would happen? Remove the sun, cut the moonlight off. If he did that, because you pouting, remember now, if you execute your right, you give the other person to execute their right ever how they desire to. Do you want that? It might be tougher than yours. Work. Be careful what you ask somebody to deal with because you ask them to deal with something that you might not even want to deal with. Be careful because it might come back harder. And they, they had a right. You had your right. Don't they have a right? Everybody got their right. So choose, I'm going to say, choose to love and do right. Whether people care about it or not, you do it. God done told you to do that anyway. Why are you being hard-headed? He said, obey me. Do what I said do. Then you don't do that, you're being hard-headed. And your whooping might not come to you like you think it's going to come. You begin to whoop every day and don't even know it. God just that powerful. Just think, today, Something came along, and you couldn't even deal with it. That could have been a whooping. Because you're supposed to have a business to deal with it. Take it to God and let him deal with it. It's too much for you. But he doesn't equip you. Every one of us has been equipped. When we came here and took the hand and joined the Christian band, we started being equipped. It says, and when the woman saw that she was not hid, man, Wonder, wonder what that feeling might have been like. Here it is. You think in all these people, you can duck and dodge. He said, no. You can't do that. Don't care how many people. That stadium down there, right? What, 15, 20,000 people? Can't nobody hide in it. I'm going to come down to Jesus. It says, she came trembling. Trembling, she was very nervous and scared and falling down before him. She didn't run from him. She fell down before him. She acknowledged it, and she declared unto him before all the people. That was a good testimony, wasn't it? In front of all the people. For what cause she had touched him. She let her history out, which could have been an embarrassing history. And just to think, this woman, 12 years. Family probably won't be bothered with her too much. Friends probably kept distant because she was labeled as being unclean. You know, because somebody is different than you are, try to ostracize them. Try not to. You know, uh, I don't like saying bad things. But that's really fictitious of me. I fight that because all sorts of things happen in life, and you can't just run from them. Though I want to, I don't want to deal with them. But they're not going nowhere. What am I going to do? I can't run from it. Jonas tried to run, but you can't run from stuff. It's there. I remember uh, as a young boy, first time seeing this, 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 this the young boy was in a wheelchair, drooling. God, I didn't want to see him like that because I wasn't, knew, I wasn't used to that. But then I got to see him more of it. So we well, I just get, get used to it. No, just deal with it because he's not going nowhere. And it says. For what cause she had touched him and how she was healed immediately. It wasn't nothing like we go to the doctor today. You might have to take a week sometime. Kind of usually some stuff, 72 hours, can give you relief. Sometimes it might take a little bit longer. But here it says 
immediately it was done. No terror in it immediately. Can you imagine the relief that she had received? Now, immediately, I don't believe she had to check. Just the spirit gave her this notification. You heal. And I think we can kind of look at something in a symbolic way that even though we're still sick and in pain, but we're healed. We got to have the faith. Even if we don't become healed, in Christ we are healed. And to look at it from that perspective, because sisters and brothers, you're going to have to be real strong. Real strong. You don't know what kind of uh, ministry help that you have to do in your home. You don't know that. All of us in here might wind up playing nurse, playing therapist. We just don't know. Everybody's healthy and looking good today. Don't have to go to the hospital. You just look over and see them in the bed. You know something's not right. You know it. Try to relate because there are similarities in all of us. There is one similarity. We all are human beings. We all have blood and a pumping heart. Now, some might not have it, but uh, I don't know how you make it without it. I don't, and I'm not medical. But I know the elements is needed. And it says, look how he, look how he held her. And he said unto her, no message sent. He said, daughter, mm, call her daughter. Be a good, good, not to be a comfort, but be a good comfort. No, that's, that was, had to be encouraging because 12 years alone negativity. 12 years. And now, it's like that. Thy faith have made thee whole. Now, go in peace. Be peaceful. No matter what, be peaceful. You heal now. Where you being disturbed, where you being ostracized, don't hold your head down no more. Go in peace. Matter of fact, you my daughter. Hmm. While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house. So we, we see that the, the, the ruler in the synagogue, he had some pretty good connection to, to people, and he had people that related to him. And it says that, uh, saying to him, that daughter is dead. Trouble not the master. Do you think bringing your condition to the Lord is troubling him? You see, that's what he's here for, to handle our troubling conditions, because who else can handle them? It shows here, come to nobody else, do it. It's not that somebody that you heard said, the scripture says that 12 years, couldn't nobody do nothing with that. The, the gentleman that was in the, with the, breaking the chain, couldn't nobody do nothing with that. So is any other evidence that somebody else could do this? If it did, nobody stepped up and did it. We didn't even see the magicians trying to do anything with this. They didn't want to be bothered with that. I, well, I can show that. I don't see it's here. But uh, we see this condition that only God can handle this condition. And then I love this part too. I just love the whole. It said 50. But when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, I love this too. He didn't tell, he said, tell one of his disciples to talk to him. He took it personal and talked to him. I want you to rely on me. Because I want I need you to spread this. And if you can't rely on me, how can you spread it? 
what you going to say? There is many out there that need this. This gospel is medicine. They need it. Are you going to demonstrate what I did for you to others that you had the capabilities of this same, but you got to come in? Remember a few weeks ago, uh, Philemon then invite Onisma in. He had to go way to Rome. In this scripture that we read, he went to Rome. Why should he? And when he's right there in the house. So, how are we taking this? Okay, it says, fear not. Don't worry about the report you just heard. Believe only. He said, only believe. Believe. And she shall be made whole. No, whole. She'll be completely restored. And we see that the woman with the 12 year was the, done the same thing. This is very encouraging. Which the whole gospel is. But this is a segment, or many segments. So we look at this segment because when the lady with the blood was in the operating room, God's operating room now, is that the surgery was did within her confines. Now we're going to see in the confines of Jairus, that surgery going to be performed in the confinement her surgery. So we see the multi-incidents, but yet individually reserved, resolved, individually. So that can give each individual a great courage of belief and, all, and said knowing too. Because we see how God had done this. It's not just we saying something. You have it right before you. And the scripture is saying it. It says, that's, that's, the, that's the words of hope. So we see that uh, Jesus uh, is really, you know, we know that Luke is the physician, but today Jesus is performing his surgeries. Jesus is. Okay, anyone? Words of hope. Yes. What well, my main man is? Oh. Okay, oh, yeah. <laughs> He's coming. Thank you, Jacob. Appreciate what you're doing, man, because you, you stay busy, man. Appreciate that. Um, I was just thinking about all of these verses, like you said. They, they were just so powerful, and particularly in... Um, well, 45, when Jesus was saying, who touched me? Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I was think I, I had always thought about it that, I mean, he knew, like you said, he knew who touched him. Um, but I never thought about that it was the opportunity for the woman to give her testimony mm -hmm. as to what happened. And even in verse 50, when he said, fear not, only believe, mm -hmm. and she shall be made whole, for me, you know, it's like Jesus didn't have to, it, it's what I need to do. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't do anything in both of those instances. He didn't have to do anything. They had to do something. And that's what I have Good. to keep reminding myself that, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's to the degree that I believe. Yeah. It's the degree that I have my faith that that he can do anything. Mm -hmm. And for him to, you know, just tell her, and you know, for her to be healed immediately, mm -hmm. you know, and for him to say that, just believe, yes, you know, yes, it's like yes. I, that is what I strive for mm. daily. Yes. And oh, good, yeah, I appreciate that. One. It's just good, you know. All, all, all of those verses were just so good and so hopeful to me because, mm -hmm. you know, you see them over and over again, but they just give a different meaning. 
when you, mm -hmm. I guess, studying for one, yeah. and then when you are kind of going through something, it's like, mm -hmm. is it, it, it's hard, right. but it's simple, Yeah, you okay, know? Yeah. And to good. be able to just focus on that is, you know, it's just really, uh, it's really encouraging to me. Thank you. Appreciate that. That was very outstanding. Thank you. Because uh, it, it shows that uh, really that we all is, is in the same bucket. And we fight with the same similar. Okay, hey y'all, for Jacob. Uh, Thank you. I would just like to add uh, also, when you look at the woman with the issue of blood, mm -hmm. and you know the law back at that day and time, you know, unclean. Right. She was trying to be very private, yeah. but she had faith to believe in God. Mm -hmm. So what does that tell us? Mm -hmm. We don't have to worry about what other people think Amen. if we have faith in God, mm -hmm. trust him. Mm -hmm. And you know, when we trust him, we will get our deliverance. Amen. Well said. I appreciate y'all compliments. I love that. Yes, Jacob. And I know brother, uh, Sister Pat wanna, wanna come in and, and give us some enlightenment. Uh, just adding to what everybody else has said, mm -hmm. when you look again at, at verse 49, I'm, I'm a person who believes when you hear something once or twice, mm -hmm. God is trying to really tell you something. Mm -hmm. So again, we're looking at the synagogue's house. Yes. We're looking at the house again. Mm -hmm. And again, it says, thy daughter is dead. So in our house, mm -hmm. are we spiritually dead? And if we are, do we need the master to come in to make us alive? Hey, thank you there. Man, how long you practice that curry ball? That's what I'm <laughs> thank you. Yes. Um, we see this life that we have. We see how precious and how so rewarding it is. But do we want to use it? He's not going to give it to us and use it for us too. And I'm glad that he don't because we'll be so lazy. We'll be so selfish. Man, we just sit there, hmm, God going to do that for me. I'm going to see you'll notice. It's available. You're not going to fix your plate and give it to you to eat. Fix your own plate. In God, I'm talking now. I'm being clear. Okay. Yes, sir. Anyone else? Uh, okay. Well, this is the outline, words of hope. And like uh, Sister Solomon say, it was filled with hope. Now, now, we only hear the word of hope, we see the word of hope. And then, too, when we look at Scripture, it says, in the beginning was the word. The word was God, and the word was with God. And I was sharing with Carla is that uh, we see Jesus in action here, physically, but his word go forth, and there's no difference, because it's still the power of Jesus, and that is so tremendously beautiful to me. If there's no one else, hey y'all, uh, we have a few minutes, and our fourth of the last outline, somebody want to talk about something, because we talk about our Lord, and that is precious, because you know somebody sing that song, I couldn't have made it. Yes, uh, Jacob, right here, Miss Pat. No, I said, I would, I said I would give it up if someone had to understand. I was just going to say, you know, when you look at 52, it talks about weeping and bewailed and moaning. Again, I always think about the house. Are we weeping and wailing and bemoaning and sad and depressed and angry because we have not let the master come in? Mm -hmm. Because we haven't let him come in and raise us, raise our spirits up from dying to being alive. Amen, thank you. Since you that, that's a good point you brought up into this verse. Now, you, so, you know something? See too is, watch who you employ. That's now, because uh, there was employed mourners in this case here. 
And so these mourners, if they mourning, they mourning, I'm saying, in the secular. Because if they were mourning in the spirit, they wouldn't be showing no doubt to God. And the point you keep expressing about the house, that's a very great expression because it was the house. Like you stated earlier, the house is within first. Then the house or the building, that's second. But first, Pat says, in here. And we studied a while back. The house needs circumcision. That's not by hands. Beautifully. And okay, good. If someone else want to tackle them there, say something on them, then we'll iterate. Otherwise, I, 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 anybody? If not, I'll let somebody. Five minutes, but uh, if not, we'll just pick some apart. But if anywhere in here, you have an expression. Your expression means something to me. I want to hear your expression. Because I need something, too. So you, Jacob, I don't mean to bring you too much, bro, but hey, I owe my mouth, bro. <laughs> when I was reading the lesson, and, and like everybody have already said, it's so much good in the lesson. But when I was reading the lesson, the Holy Spirit led me to just focus on the word, which is hope. You know, we all have the word. Like you said, Jesus is the word. Mm -hmm. So it's like if we can stay focused on the word, knowing that that is where our hope come from. Amen. Then we can make it because just like in this lesson, we see Jesus answered their prayer. Mm -hmm. They was rejoicing because he gave them hope and he answered just like they wanted him to answer. But he's not always going to answer the way we want him to answer. Amen. But we got to believe his yes, word. Yes, yes, yes. We got to rest in his word, mm -hmm. knowing that he know what's best. And if he say, arise, we're going to do that. But if he say, no, it's not time, mm -hmm. then we got to trust his word to know that he know what's right. And when I was reading this lesson, it was like, it is just so much hope in knowing who Jesus is. Amen. So true. You know, just knowing who Jesus is, is just so much hope. And I was just saying, Lord, just help my unbelief because being in these frail body, mm -hmm. the human body, we're going to have doubt. Yes, yes. But it was somewhere in the scripture where it say, help my unbelief. Yeah. I believe, but help my unbelief. Mm -hmm. And Jesus knows what's best. He looks out for his people. He know what's best. He know what we deserve. He know what he's going to give us, and he know what's right. So he's going to get the glory whether he take us up or, or not. You know, he's he going to get the glory. So it's like, Lord, just help us to keep the hope in the Lord. You know, Amen. just help us to rest in that hope. Amen. Thank you, Dale. Yes, indeed. Okay. Okay. I'm just going to come right behind Mary, and I'm just going to say, Amen. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just, I'm, I'm, the, I'm just looking at how compassionate he is, and he reminds us that you know that he see our struggle, yeah, and also he see our struggle to um, genuine faith. Mm -hmm. And right here, the woman, I mean, she not only received only physical healing, but also emotional and spiritual wholeness. Mm -hmm. Uh, and you know, you know, Jesus made her clean, restoring her dignity, and, and allowing her to rejoice. Social, yeah. Her story illustrated that you know Jesus cares about every aspect of our lives. Amen. That's daily, true. every day, every, every minute, day. every second, every hour. Thank you. We are set. Okay. Back in the house. Okay. Yes. Yeah, so, uh. Isn't it good to know that when Jesus is. Is in the midst of our lives, no matter the circumstances. Because here we have one that an issue of blood, the other one being raised from the dead, no matter what the circumstances. Amen. Mm -hmm. When Jesus is in the midst of it, we got hope. Amen. Thank you. Uh, yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay. Um, uh, just a couple of things here to add to uh, with the woman with the issue of blood here. All the folks touched him. Everybody touched him, and he know that. 
But if you notice that the scripture points out specifically, there was only one who spoke out. Yeah. And she told him exactly what her issue was. You know, she didn't hit meet around the bush. Well, you know, bless my home. Uh, they, no, I got a problem. What is your problem? He didn't ask what is your problem, but she told him, <laughs> this is my problem. So the word tells us to take our petitions before the Lord. Yes. When we take them there, tell him exactly what we want. And then we see where he raised the girl from the dead. Okay. If you notice that, where did the doubt and the, uh, the where were the naysayers in the church? No, oh, don't take that to the master. She dead. Leave him alone. Let him go on and do something else. Mm -hmm. No, he wanted to do that. Amen. Okay, then so what he say? All right, okay, for those of you who don't believe, oh, you get out. You see, everybody that we include in our prayer circle may not be praying the same thing that we're asking for. That's why it's important. Will you pray for me? Okay, yes, I will. Now, what are we agreeing to pray on? Mm -hmm. Because the Bible tells us that whatsoever, uh, if, if two touch and agree on anything on earth, he would do it. And what you agree on in earth to doing, he said, we're going to agree on it in heaven to do it. So everything that we want from the Lord is we can get. But how do you get it? You get it by faith. Mm -hmm. You don't doubt. Again, uh, uh, let, me, let me backtrack one sec. With this woman, when she, when she pressed through the crowd, being unclean, I look at this as being like leprosy. See, leprosy, uh, some consider that to be a curse. Some of you consider this to be a curse. But to go in the public when you had leprosy or even when she had this issue of blood, mm -hmm. the punishment was death. And she touched all these people getting to Jesus. So then what did she do? She made all of them unclean, speakingly, fig uh, uh, figuratively speaking. But Jesus then answered her and said, hey, what do you want? Well, I know everybody touched me, but what is it that you want? Well, how do you know who touched you? Because the virtue has gone out for me. He knew that. Mm -hmm. He was there at that particular time, at that particular spot, for that particular woman to come forth. After 12 years, she tried everything, spent every dime she had. Could nobody do anything for her. Even if she had touched him, I believe, it doesn't say this, though. Even if she had touched him, and if she had not spoken out, Lord, it is I. I need you. I don't believe she may have been healed. Yeah. She asked him to heal her. And by faith, and that's what he did. Thank you. Now, remember now this part. When she touched him, she was immediately healed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We're going to cut it off. We're going to have a little... From our um, beginners and primaries. Yay. The young folks of the church. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Uh, they, you, you, when they come up, because we got to close out Sunday school first. I just acknowledge that. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we are appreciative, Father, because that you hold us in your hands, you carry us. You heal and you comfort. You teach us, you inspire us. We are truly grateful children of yours, Father. Thank you for being our God. The mercies, the blessings. Thank you for giving them, Father. Bless the Sunday school and keep blessing your word in our hearts. Continue to bless my cavalry that she might grow in your spirit. For it's thy servant's prayer. Pray in our son Jesus' name forever. Amen and thank God. Amen. Let's appreciate the Sunday school. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, by the way, read that whole chapter, please. Please read that whole chapter. Matter of fact, read it a few times. Thank you. <laughs>
We can do better than that. Let's give them another hand. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Sister Buford and our, her class, her teacher, her substitute. You know what? This is what Sunday school is all about, teaching our children about Jesus Christ, who is who, what is what, what he do, what he came to do. Let's give them another hand. Amen. <laughs> All right, now we will hear from our uh, primary class. Give you a little gesture. I got a big mouth, y'all know that. <laughs> so we're gonna do our best to do this little skit right quick because I needed a lot of people, but I don't have a lot of people, so I gotta use what I got. So y'all just bow with us.
until you all see a big crowd and Jesus is coming and this is uh, the lady with the issue of blood. Go. Her 12, his 12 year old daughter's already dead. Jesus. She is not dead. She is, she is not dead, my child. She is just asleep. go. We had more people, but they did a great job. So y'all just give them a big hand. You all, come on. Let's give them another hand. You know, in spite of, they gave us their best. You know, at the spur of a moment, Sister Brown came up with this, and they did great. So let's Amen. give them another hand. It's all about teaching our children, you all. It's all about giving them encouragement and let them know that we are behind them, especially when they are doing something for the Lord. Amen. So uh, if nothing else, let us stand. Oh, I'm sorry. That level of display, that quick, deserved recognition. No practice came out and gave performance. See, there is more reason to thank the Lord. That in that class with that age, they came out and performed that miracle. Thank amen. You. amen, 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 amen. Are there any announcements? Okay, if nothing else, let us stand. We're going to ask Deacon Portress if he would close us out, please. Let us pray. Father God, once again, oh Lord, we come to say thank you, Lord, for another day, Lord. Yes, Lord. Thank Lord, we you. thank you for thank this you. Sunday school lesson, this class, Lord. We thank you for all the classes, Lord. Yes. We thank you for Mount Carey, Lord, as we, they continue here to... Teach, O oh Heavenly Father, and, and make sure that your word go forth, Lord. We pray, O oh Heavenly Father, for these youth classes, Lord. We thank you for these teachers, O oh Heavenly Father, that are diligently teaching these kids the word of God, Lord. Father God, we just thank you for all your blessings, Lord. We pray, O oh Heavenly Father, for the faith that has been amplified here today, oh, yes, Lord. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be the people that you want us to be, Lord. That we, be, that we may be able to do it, O oh, Heavenly Father, without no fear. We thank you for all your blessings, Lord, as we prepare to go forth in this day, Lord, and to worship you, Lord. 
We pray that you will be with us and lead us and guide us, O oh, Heavenly Father. Continue to grow and strengthen us, O oh, Heavenly Father. In your Son Jesus' name I do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, y'all. You all are dismissed.